Welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary and to our lectionary podcasts. And we're now in the, the second Sunday in Advent. And um, we're going to look today at uh, the Epistle lesson. And that's found in 2 Peter chapter 3, which has to do with the Lord's coming. Now before this text, uh, Peter is warning people warning his congregation about uh, people who dismiss, not to dismiss the end times, because there are scoffers who will say, well, the Lord's never going to come back. Um, uh, you predicted it for so long, and we could say after 2,000 years that um, we've been waiting for a while. And yet Peter reminds them that uh, our Lord did uh, destroy the earth by a flood during the time of Noah. And so also, at the end times, the earth uh, will be uh, brought to an end by fire. So don't be complacent, for our Lord is coming again. And he's waiting, and who knows, he could come tomorrow, he could come before this broadcast ever is put online. At the same time, um, the reason he has delayed is not because he is slow to keep his promise, as some people might think, but because he is actually full of mercy, loving kindness, and patience. So we look at 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning with the 8th verse. And we have what is, I guess, sometimes called in uh, the Greek uh, a third-person imperative. In Latin, I guess it would be a justive, which I would like. But in this matter, which is in the speaking of the end times, um, let you not be let a person let you not be deceived. Let let no one deceive you, uh, beloved. Uh, because um, one day, uh, in the Lord's sight or parakura, one day before our Lord is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. So our Lord doesn't think of time the way that we, that we experience it. Um, so he entered into our time in the person of Christ Jesus as the one who is the creator, though, of course, he is above and beyond time. And his aim, ultimately, is to bring us into eternal life. So don't think about, and of course we know this kind of thing in our own lives too. Sometimes in our own life a day can seem like it's forever, and then you can look back on ten years and it's like the blink of an eye. And so it is, we should not uh, be deceived, um, because the time indeed is coming. And uh, now it says, the Lord, the Kurios, he's, he's not slow in his promise, at least not as some people think of slow. So you think, is our Lord plotting? Is he, is he sleeping? Uh, does he not care? Well, no, it's none of that. It's not like he's forgotten us. Uh, but the reason he is slow to come, at least the reason he has not yet come, is because of his mercy towards us. And of course, um, I'm grateful that the Lord has delayed his coming so that I might come into this world and to, of course, know salvation. And then even today, uh, people are coming into the church each and every day. Of course, in our own American churches and throughout the world, people are entering into the church and entering into salvation because the day has been delayed. So he's macro thume. He's large-hearted in a way that he's merciful and in in his coming, and he's patient with us. Now, why is he patient with us, or what's the, what's the motivation for his for waiting? Because he's not willing, he doesn't want someone, anyone, to apolesta. He doesn't want anyone to, to, be, to perish. Uh, but, you know, what is in our Lord's heart? Instead, um, he does not want uh, some to, to perish, or, but he wants all 
to koresse, to enter into, that's to get the place of, enter into the place of repentance. And this is, it shows our Lord is not a Calvinist God. That is to say, it brings God no, God t- takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God does not um, find it glorious that some are damned. He does not damn some from eternity simply for his glory. He delays because he does want all to enter into metanoia, into repentance. Now, of course, we know that this will not be the case, that uh, many, of course, reject the gospel, but it's, it's the Lord's desire um, to bring invite into the banquet as, as many as possible. And so th- this is what Advent is all about, is Advent is we, we are waiting for the coming of our Lord. And now Peter tells us why our Lord is waiting and coming. Why doesn't our Lord come today? Well, maybe he will come today, but why didn't he come yesterday? Uh, because he wants no one to perish, but he wants all to enter into the metanoia into the repentance. Well, we do know that he will come, though, um, in verse 10. Okay, he, he, this is the future of Ekoi. Um, he will come, or, or the, the, I should say the Hemera Kuriu, the day of the Lord. Now, the day of the Lord in this context is, is the last day. For the day of the Lord will come as a kleptes. Now, their lestes is robber. Kleptes is a, a thief, one who comes unbeknownst that you're not ready for. He comes like a thief. Um, elsewhere, we're told he will, the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Now, when this happens, there's going to be a lot going on. Um, the heavens, so here we have the picture of almost back to creations, I, I suppose. The heavens will uh, dissolve or they will par elusantai, par echomai, will pass away with a great, this is an adverbial phrase that it's going to pass away with a, a loud crash. And so now things are quiet, I suppose. But when our Lord comes, there'll be a loud crash and um, the heavens will pass away as we know it. And then the, this is a word he likes to use here, the stoicheia. We see this in Galatians. These are like the fundamental building blocks. The stoicheia can be as simple as like an alphabet, the ABCs. But they're also the ABCs of the universe. We might say that the elements, the elemental forces that hold the universe <coughs> together. And the elements, um, we are told, um, will be, well, the first of all, kasumana, having been burnt up. The, so the elements are going to come to the fire and then will be loosened. Um, so it's, it's all going to kind of unravel or will fall apart. Um, everything will dissolve. And then this is really remarkable. So the, the, and as this happens, the earth and the things in it, uh, the works uh, will be which they will be, this is from Eureka, they will be, they will be found out. So the, the, the earth and the works that are in it, the works that are done in it, will be found out. This reminds me very much of perhaps Peter was uh, listening to, of course he was, our Lord's teaching in Matthew 10 that nothing now is hidden that will not one day be revealed. So we can hide things, we can hide our sins, and of course when uh, they come out though, um, we want to keep them hidden. But on the last day, everything will be 
revealed and all the secrets will be given up. The earth and everything and the works will be found out on this last day and it all comes to the day of, we all come to the day of reckoning. Um, and then verse 11, uh, since all of these things, with all of these things, luomenon, a genitive absolute, with all of these things being loosened or falling apart, uh, in what way, therefore, is it necessary for you to who parking? Um, in what way, therefore, is it necessary to, to be? Uh, how well shall we comport ourselves? Or if this is right, how shall you comport yourself in holy ways and in piety? So in pious and holy ways. So we know our Lord is coming. We know that everything ultimately will be exposed. So we ought to live um, with that kind of knowledge that the end of this will come. Everything is going to come out. So this is a, I guess it's a warning to us, but it's the warning of somebody who loves us. It's a heads up. I'm telling you that this is all coming to an end. So prepare for the end and do it by living lives of holiness and of piety. And you think about, you know, the preparation as we do during this time. We, we prepare so much. We prepare food. We look at recipes for, for the holidays. We, um, at this time, we're usually decorating our trees. Many of us are. Um, so we're preparing our houses for the festivities. Well, we should also prepare ourselves, or how much more should we prepare ourselves for the coming, for the coming of our Lord? when everything will be laid bare. And as we do this, we are, verse 12, we are prosdokontos, uh, waiting, and we're even hastening. <laughs> so we're busy. There's a kind of a funny joke, uh, maybe it's a license, it's a bumper sticker, the Lord's <laughs> returning, look busy. Well, maybe not look busy, but actually, um, there's much to do. There are prayers to be paid. There's the church uh, sermons to be preached, the church services to attend, sing songs to hymns to sing to our Lord, um, got the gospel to be spread to all nations. So as we wait, we're not just sitting there, but we are speeding, we are hurrying the... And of course, we do pray, come Lord Jesus. Um, the parousia of the day of God. So we are looking forward to uh, the coming of the day of God. Uh, on account of which the heavens, again, now this is what he, he had talked about before verse 8, in the first destruction it's through water and now it's through fire. So it's, it's almost like in the end times, everything will spin out of control and there will be a dis, uh, dissolution, a dissolving, and then it will come back together in the new heavens and the new earth. But the heavens, uh, having been burning, uh, will be loosened up. And um, verse 12, we have that wonderful word again, the, stoi the stoicheia. And... Um, the stoicheia, the elemental things, I mean, the, the elements which hold the universe together, um, uh, having been burnt or be, being exposed to the fire, are going to, to, to ketai, are going to melt away. It's really quite, it's quite a remarkable um, picture of the end times. Uh, or the, really, not the, just the end times, but really the last day. Um, well, what do we look forward to? Well, we are pros, we go to verse 13, we see the verb is here at the end of this, right before the comma. Um, well, we wait for, or we should say the new, the new, the kanos, there will be new heavens and the new earth. So, 
And it seems like this new heaven and new earth were, are going to be made from the very elements of God's creation. We look forward to that. We wait for it. We look forward to it when things shall be reconstituted in Christ in the new creation, when sin is done away with and sorrow and um, thorns. No, we're going to sing this joy to the world. Uh, no, no more let sin and sorrow uh, grow, nor thorns infest the ground. Well, that's the new heaven and the new earth when a creation is brought to renewal. So we wait for that renewal. And the renewal began in the person of Christ. Christ took upon our human flesh. And having been raised from the dead, um, he has raised a glorious body. His is the first fruits. Um, so when we look at Christmas, it's the beginning of the new creation there. And it's the glory that we await where we will have physical bodies, but the physical bodies will be spiritual bodies. We will be... Um, we will not only simply be restored to life, but we will be raised into the new life, the new creation. So we wait this according to verse 13, according to his, his promise. And in this promise, um, this is the promise, and in these things in which and hoist, righteousness dwells. Well, that's just wonderful. The righteousness, it could be a state of righteousness. And when we think about the kind of world that we live in, when we think about the injustice, when we think of the people wronged, and of course you think of the injustice that we ourselves perpetrate, it's a mess of a world and it's not a, it's not a pretty one. But we look forward to this new heaven and this new earth according to the promise, in which righteousness will inhabit the world again. But this righteousness, of course, is none other than Christ himself. And Christ will be all in all. The one that the centurion said in the Gospel of Luke, surely this was the righteous one. It is this righteousness which then inhabits the earth. So we end in verse 14. Therefore, again, so... Um, He's not telling this you know, because he doesn't like us, but because he loves us, or even more, that we're loved by God. We are the agape toy. We are the ones who have been baptized, the ones who have heard the word of the Father. Um, you are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. As the, Lord, as the Father says this, says this over the Son, we who have been baptized in the Son also now are called beloved. So verse 14, therefore, beloved, um, since we are waiting, we are, again, pros doc ontos, as we are waiting for these things. Um, again, how to translate this, um, uh, live a life of haste or be busy about this. Make sure that you're living in such a way um, uh, that you may be found. Remember, in the end, everything's going to be found out. Our goal, though, is to be found in, in peace, the peace which our Lord gives. That's the peace which the angels will sing about um, on Christmas Day. Joy to the world, peace on earth. Uh, this is what Christ brought into the world in Christmas. And our Lord will come again. We pray that we will be found in this peace of which the angels spoke, which is the peace which Christ brought. We remember last week we were looking at our Lord as he was entering into Jerusalem, riding in on a donkey, because he was bringing peace, um, the peace of heaven to earth by paying the price for, uh, of our sins and bringing us salvation. Therefore, uh, let us live lives that we are, and we have two alpha primitives here, that we are uh, without uh, spot or blemish. And this is, this is, in the end, it's all going to come out. This is the idea that sin is, in fact, a stain. Um, we pray that on the last day we live without spot we are found without blot or 
or blemish, because um, the sin does not simply go away, first of all, we should aim to live lives that are pure and holy. And um, knowing our sinful flesh, that also means that we must live a life of metanoia. Remember that we looked at that before. He wants us all to come into metanoia, which is repentance. So knowing our sinful flesh, we live a life of daily repentance. And living the life of daily repentance means that we return every day to our baptism. And it's in our baptism that we are washed clean. It's in our baptism um, that we may indeed be without a spot or, or blemish. And this ties to our gospel reading where well, we, we meet John the Baptist. And John the Baptist preaches a message of repentance, again, just like metanoia, for the forgiveness of sins. And of course, the, he preaches also the one who will, uh, John says, I baptize you with water. But uh, Christ comes and baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and cleanses us from all sins that we might be found indeed uh, without spot or blemish on the last day. Well, thank you for joining us here on the podcast, and I wish you uh, great blessings as you prepare uh, for, the, for the day of the Lord and also for Christmas Day. Thank you.